My name is Jay Berkowitz, and the presentation today is called Web 2010. Discover the 10 trends defining your business future. And my objectives are to talk about what are the innovations that are driving success across the internet? What are the top social media websites for business? What's the future for Google? And who's poised to challenge their market presence? And we think there is actually one entity that is now poised to challenge Google a little bit. How can you use the internet to build your personal brand? How do you actually make some money in social media? How do you Twitter? Do you need a long tail? What's a people pond? How's my volume? It seems a little loud. It's OK. Good. Um, and um, if you don't want to take the slides with you, a copy of this presentation and a bunch more is available at presentation.10goldenrules.com. My personal background, I worked for Coca-Cola and McDonald's and Sprint. And I moved to Florida about eight years ago to work at a company called eDiets.com. And I got really heavily into the dot-com space and into lots of testing and internet marketing. We were one of the top five advertisers in the world. And then I was asked to speak at a direct marketing association event. And I wrote a presentation called The Ten Golden Rules of Online Marketing. And five or six people came up to me after the presentation and said, that was really good. We'd like to hire you as a consultant. And so I started my consulting business eight years ago. Uh, six years ago, sorry. And um, we wrote uh, all of um, the experiences of the 10 golden rules into a book called the 10 golden rules of online marketing workbook. We recently won a Sophie award for the best use of emerging media. And we've been featured in the Wall Street Journal, the business journals, uh, B&T Australia, I just spoke in Sydney, Australia, and uh, was featured on Fox Business TV. So without further ado, let's look at Web 2010. Let's discover the future of uh, internet marketing. The first strategy is something I call micro-communications. And we're all um, taking our news in really small bites. This is how I set up what I call an iGoogle. So on the left-hand column, I have some internet marketing blogs. Seth Godin's blog, Micro -persu Persuasion, Steve Rubell, um, Rohit Bhargava, Influential Marketing blog. Down the middle, I have my search engine blogs. And on the right-hand side, I have like the 10 Golden Rules blog and some personal interest blogs. And so you only have one headline to catch my attention with uh, a small sound bite, because now we're taking our news in little bites, or we're taking our news on our iPhones or on our smartphones. And all you have is a headline to catch people's attention. Of course, Twitter is kind of like the poster child for micro uh, communications. And the way, uh, how many people are in the room are on Twitter? Show of hands. Everybody? Anybody not on Twitter? Just a few? Okay, so I don't need to spend a lot of time on Twitter. You guys know how it works. The, the interesting thing for me, and, and something I share with a lot of newbies, is really I treat Twitter, first of all, as my personalized news, news feed. I'm signed up to follow some of the top people in the industry, some of you here in the room, and I get the information customized in a manner I want to take it. Um, you guys know about the, you know, how to select someone on Twitter, so I'm going to skip that. Here's a neat story of a small company called Mission Pie. It's a bakery in San Francisco. And people would come in and they'd say, hey, I love that apple pie from last week. I'd like to get another one. And they'd say, oh, I'm sorry, we only bake the freshest pies of the week. And so they started saying to people, why don't you follow us on Twitter? And they send out tweets like this one. Psst, hey, you, I'm talking to you. Keep this on the down low, but we'll have strawberry rhubarb later today. And since they started Twittering, their sales are up 20%. A company called Woot.com sends out one Twitter every night at 1 AM. It's a multi-million dollar business from sending one product offer a day. And they send it on Twitter and Blogger. And this tweet went out at 1 o'clock AM, saying there was an iRobot vacuum for sale. And by 10.30 the next morning, it was sold out. 12 seconds allows us to make little 12-second video and audio recordings on our cell phone. And it's like the audio and video version of Twitter. Quick allows us to stream live from our cell phones. And I wrap up this section with something I call the three E's of social media. The first one is educate. So it's very valuable if you could teach people something in social media. And Mashable does a great job. They cover the industry, but they always have great little educational pieces on their blog. This one says, for those run wondering what all the RTs are, retweets, we have a guide called How to Retweet in Twitter. The second one is Entertain. And Shaquille O'Neal has over a million followers, not because he's the most relevant basketball player anymore, 
but because he's funny, he, he tweets in his own Shaq language, and he's commenting on everything happening from the finals to the All-Star game, um, and he's entertaining. And the third thing is engage. My friend Mahe Foliaki um, is iconic 88, and every morning, because he's based in Sydney, every morning I wake up to a number of amazing, incredible, uplifting tweets. And he's so uplifting, all his messages are very positive, that he's the second most retweeted person in the world. And he's very engaging. You see his Twitter stream, there's all these at replies and other people's tweets. He's retweeting other people. And so he's very engaging. He's developing that two-way dialogue. So the three E's of social media um, is, is maybe... Uh, something you might want to retweet. Uh, the three E's of social media, educate, entertain, and engage. So the first strategy, micro-communications, short messages for a short attention span society. The um, opportunities, the business opportunities are getting caught in those people's RSS subscriptions. So people can subscribe to take your messages. And every, everything you do in social media, you want to think about those short attention span subscribers, those the messages are now coming through on the iPhone. So your blog headlines have to work like a headline to capture people's attention. Um, Twitter for business, great opportunities we saw with um, Mission, uh, Mission Pi and Woot and opportunities like Quick and the advanced strategy, the three E's of social media, educate, engage, and entertain. The second strategy I call virtualization. A great opportunity we have now in virtualizing everything we're doing in business. This is a course I was recruited to uh, help develop with the University of San Francisco. And it's an interactive marketing course. You can achieve your um, internet master's certificate in internet marketing. And the entire course takes place virtually. So we have students from all around the world, and they watch these 15-minute videos. And eight 15-minute videos comprises a week of lectures. And we have a number of experts um, from the internet marketing space who've contributed to the content. So it all takes place virtually. Of course, this is a billion dollar industry. Uh, University of Phoenix, Kaplan University are billion dollar uh, spaces. So if you want to look for a really hot trend in internet marketing and affiliate marketing, it's the education space. Um, IBM is doing virtual training. They're bringing people together from around the world for virtual conferences in Second Life. Aaron Blasky's made a name for herself as a virtual assistant, so you can have a virtual secretary. Uh, we use GoToMeeting, we love it. It's great for virtual meetings. And uh, we'll have meetings with our clients all around the world. They can see our computer screen and call into a, a toll-free line. We use Guru.com to source virtual employees. Uh, Date.com for those of you interested in virtual dating. So the second strategy is virtualization. Businesses and segments going completely virtual. The opportunity to use virtual assistants, virtual employees, set up virtual meetings. And some advanced strategies. You know, what could you do to provide virtual services? What could you do to virtualize a segment of your business today? Or what could you do with virtual training, which is super hot, to either promote other people's training programs, it could promote the University of San Francisco or Kaplan or one of the virtual programs as an affiliate, it's super, super hot. Or what could you do with virtual training in order to sell some of the services that you provide? So the, the tweet might be, how can you virtualize to save time or create a new business channel? The third strategy is free. And Chris Anderson, who wrote the book, The Long Tail, has a book out called Free. And he took a really interesting approach with the book. He made the book free of charge on Kindle, and he also made the full audio book free of charge on iTunes. And the interesting thing is that the abridged version, the shorter version of the audio book, they're charging for. So the one that took more time to edit, the one that saves you time, they're saying is worth more money, and the completely free book is available uh, on iTunes, and I loved it. I downloaded it. This is a WordPress theme, and WordPress makes websites completely free because you can download WordPress and you can blog and you can make it look like a website today. Radiohead put their music out for free. Um, we do a podcast on iTunes, and it's completely free for me to upload my podcast, and they provide uh, access to about 80% of podcast listeners. Google Analytics is completely free. You can find out how many people are coming to your website. If you don't have analytics on your website or your blog, you absolutely should have it. It tells you how many people come to your site, where they came from, where they exit, what keywords they use to find your website. This is a great tool I love. It's called SEO Quake, Q-U-A-K-E. -E. And this is a little toolbar that sits up here on my browser. And it tells me that Affiliate Summit is ranked a 6 out of 10 by Google. 
83,000 people are linking to this website. And links to the website make it very, very important in the search engines, right? And the Alexa rank of the site, Alexa gives every, every website in the world one number. Number one in the world is Yahoo. Number two is Google. Number three is YouTube. Um, number 26,826 is Affiliate Summit. So it's a very, very popular website in the top 27,000 websites in the world. Here's uh, Lyris, uh, software solution, ranked an 8 out of 10. They have 1,440 pages indexed or read by Google. So the two main components of the search engine success. Number one, how many pages or words have been read on your website? Number two, how many other sites link to those pages? So it's really a determinant of, of search engine success. They're in the top 20,000 sites in the world. Uh, Larry Balin did a great presentation yesterday. Uh, his book website, Mummy, Where Do Customers Come From, is ranked a 4 out of 10. He has 1,300 links to his site. And Viva9, the Viva9 guys here, if you guys want to check out a hot um, affiliate program, these guys are out of Australia and really a, a really growing affiliate network. Uh, three page rank, 155 links to the site. This is a tool I've been playing with for the last six months or so. It's great. It's called Compete.com. So we had a little face-off here between the affiliate networks. And I was actually surprised to see the blue line was our party host last night, Share a Sale. They had 1,958,000 unique visitors to their website last month. Um, and they've actually surpassed CJ, who's the green line. And I was surprised to see how far down LinkShare had fallen um, in, at, at the bottom. So Compete.com, great tool to see how your website's performing versus competitors. Uh, here's Quantcast, another great free tool. And it actually breaks down the demographics of people who are coming to your website and how they index. SpyFu is a really neat free tool. It tells you how much your competitors are spending on pay-per-click advertising. And it's amazing because it actually breaks down what keywords they're bidding on, how much they're bidding, what bid position they're in, what's the title of their pay-per-click ad. Very, very powerful tool. So the third strategy, free, using, using amazing free products with a revenue model, products like WordPress and uh, Google Analytics, SEO, Quake, SpyFu, the advanced strategies are to offer the product for free and then have an upgraded model that you can pay for. So for example, a number of products uh, that we're looking at here, like Compete.com and SpyFu, have a free product that gives us the slides that we saw, but then there's a lot of detailed information you can purchase in the upgraded subscription model. And that's a lot, about, a lot of what Chris Anderson talks about in his book, Free, is the freemium, the free plus, plus paid. So a tweet might be something like free tools for internet marketing, SEO Quake, Analytics, SpyFu, Compete, Quanta, Quantcast, WordPress, and iTunes. The fourth strategy is something I call social search. And I actually used social media to build this presentation. So I didn't think I knew all the hottest trends that were coming up in internet marketing. So I asked the question on LinkedIn, I said, what's next on the internet? I'm writing a new presentation. I'd love your help. What's hot? And I got about 70 or 80 replies through LinkedIn and Twitter. I also did Twitter tweets. And then I sent out another series of, of LinkedIn questions and tweets. And I put the, the list of the first seven or eight strategies that I'd come up with. And people helped me refine the themes and give me examples that I'm sharing with you today. So it's like social crowdsourcing. I mentioned a website that's poised to challenge Google. And search.twitter.com is really changing the way I search for things. Because Twitter is instant search, and Google still takes two or three hours to index news stories. It takes a day or two or three to index most of our websites. But search.twitter.com is instantaneous search. Here's a search for the hashtag code. If you ever see those little pound signs that people are using in Twitter tweets, it's a code, so we all use the same code to refer to the same topic. And so the, the code ASE09, ASE09 is everything that everyone's saying about this trade show, Affiliate Summit East 09. And so I can search instantaneously what's on people's minds right now. Here's our friend Chris Brogan. Shout out to Mr. Brogan, uh, our keynote from this morning. And um, Chris showed me this amazing example. Sorry, we're just uh, indexing something. Um, he, he asked a question on his Twitter, and he has over 65,000, 75,000, 80,000 Twitter followers. And he asked everyone, he said, I'm going on a business trip, and I, he wanted to f get some new books. So he said, what are you reading? And within an hour and 15 minutes, he had 100 book suggestions. And then he took those book suggestions and added it to his blog, 
and he provided it out to everybody else, so he created content for his blog. It's social crowdsourcing. Um, we're all commenting on trips and hotels. I'm using TripAdvisor all the time to plan my trips, and Yelp to research restaurants, and Angie's List to look at local suppliers. The Czar Voice, the CEO Brett Hurt told an amazing story. By adding ratings and reviews, social commentary to your website, uh, Petco improved their, their conversions 50%. So social search, um, adding reviews to your website, participating in ratings and reviews is an opportunity to get your brand and your links out there. Um, some business applications, things like TripAdvisor, Google, uh, Yelp, and Angie's List. And the advanced strategies, building a, a community around your information, um, asking for ratings, getting listed, making sure you're listed in all these different uh, sites we talked about. This is a, a YouTube video that became very popular. And this guy had been waiting for Comcast to come and fix his connection for several weeks. And the video said things like, thanks Comcast for week-long outages. Thanks for promising to call back and not calling. And then he filmed the technician. He actually fell asleep on his couch. He was on hold with Comcast for over an hour trying to figure out how to fix this guy's access. And the things had over 1.2 million views. Now, Comcast has figured this out, and they've gotten into the game. And Frank Eliasson and the, team, and the team at Comcast Cares have now built a really popular brand in social media. And you know that they're there for you in social media to answer your questions. And Frank's done a great job building that awareness. As a matter of fact, just this weekend, I saw Craig Newmark, the founder of Craigslist, sent a Twitter to Comcast Cares, and he said, can you help with outages? Amazing. Um, Dell had a similar experience where this blogger was having trouble getting his Dell machine repaired, and he started a series of blogs called Dell Hell. But um, the team, Richard Binhammer at Dell, has done an amazing job uh, building that social media brand and, and, and researching and reading twi search.twitter.com and using products like Technorati Blog Search and a product called Radian 6. And they're monitoring what's being said about their brand. And when people have a problem with Dell service or they're trying to figure out which computer to buy, they're connecting with them. Um, and it's called um, uh, customer service as the new marketing department. So monitor your brand in social media. Use these different tools like Radian 6 and search.twitter.com the way Richard Adell is, Technorati and Google Blog Search. Um, monitor your brand and join into the conversation. And I interviewed Richard Binhammer from Dell on my podcast, and what he said, his guidance was be genuine, be transparent, and experiment. Try different technologies, but be really genuine for the brand. Um, and you know, you really hear that, you'll hear that over and over uh, over the next couple days. So um, one soundbite might be search.twitter.com is instant search, Google is one to three days search. This is a picture that was taken right after the miracle in the Hudson. And Janice Crooms was right there on the scene. And he took a picture of the plane. And his tweets uh, went up in TwitPic, which is a Twitter picture application. He said, there's a plane in the Hudson. I'm on the ferry to going, up to, going to pick up the people. Crazy. And the interesting thing here is he disintermediated, or he removed the middleman. He disintermediated the media. He became the media in this instant. And Twitter is becoming the way that news is breaking these days. And the news sources even went to this individual and interviewed him. Like the New York Times called him to interview him to find out what had happened in this situation. Um, so the Huffington Post is allowing um, us to become consumer journalists and post in this very popular blog. Amazon disintermediated the bookstores. So they removed the bookstores from the book buying experience. And now they're even disintermediating the book. The Kindle actually removes the book from our reading experience. Peter Shankman, who's our keynote speaker here tomorrow morning, developed a product called Harrow, Help a Reporter Out. And every day I get an email with about 30 different media leads. How many people are subscribed for Harrow? Just a few of you. It's an amazing service. And I get this email, and they're looking for experts. And so I review it, and I look for the media leads. And look at some of the leads in here. Homeowners default on mortgages. The USA Today is looking for an expert. The best cruising deals of 2009, the Los Angeles Times is looking for an expert. But there was a business prior to Peter's um, free, free service called Help a Reporter Out called ProfNet. And ProfNet's been disintermediated. 
the PR ser services used to pay a lot of money for these leads, and now Peter sends out three times a day, sends out this amazing email. So in we're seeing the next evolution, or part two of disintermediation. And what opportunities are, are there for you from a business perspective to take advantage of these news holes and communicate and share news directly um, as a consumer journalist? How can you develop products to speak directly with consumers? So how can you take advantage of the opportunity to disintermediate a model in your business, to communicate directly, to sell directly, to remove the middleman? Helpareporter.com, which is free to the consumer with sponsor revenue. So the business model, Peter, has sponsors. I might be losing battery. Does this, does this thing go on battery? Um, so a, a Twitter tweet might be, what can you do to disintermediate the model in your industry to remove the middleman? Strategy number seven. This is a chart from Compete.com, and the green chart is Facebook. The blue chart that crosses over and X's um, early this year is, is Facebook. And Facebook surpass, surpassed MySpace uh, in about January of this year. But where it all started happening was when Facebook open sourced their platform. And we see um, this is a, a, an application. And by open source, meaning Facebook opened up their back end technology so people could build applications that interact with the Facebook database. Um, this is an application called Texas Hold'em Poker, developed by a company called Zinnia that's doing about $40 million in revenue selling applications. Even the Pope's launched a Facebook application. We've downloaded over a billion applications on iPhone. And of course, Twitter, the reason I believe uh, that Twitter really exploded in popularity and beat out a couple competitors is they made it very easy for uh, developers to build applications on top of Twitter. These are just some, in, in this Twitterverse chart, are just some of uh, thousands of Twitter applications that have been built. Here's a couple that I really love. This one's called We Follow. And you can go into We Follow and tag yourself. You can identify a category of, of information that you tweet about. It's a great tool to find people to follow. So if you have a business area of interest, or you have an interest, um, a personal interest, a passion, a hobby, you can type in the tag, and you can find the top people in your industry. So here's the top people who tag themselves as affiliate marketing. And Online Save has 39,000 followers. So it's a great tool to find people who follow to follow in, in your area of interest. And once you get into advanced Twitter, you have to have a Twitter application. So this is one I'm using called TweetDeck. There's another one called Seismic Desktop. But basically, this allows me to sort people into columns. And I'm following over 1,000 people in Twitter. So it's a very powerful tool. Down the left-hand side here, I have all my geeks. I have people like uh, Chris Brogan, Steve Garfield, who's one of the top video bloggers in the world. Joel Kahn just wrote a book on Twitter. Jeremiah Aoyang is one of the top analysts who covers the industry. So I, I have about 50 to 100 people in that column, and I can quickly get a snapshot of exactly what's happening in my industry. The middle column shows me uh, anyone who mentioned my name. And like I said in, in the three E's of social media, engage. I always want to engage with people who mention my name. And on the right-hand side is I, I'll put a search in there, a specific search. So right now I have the um, ASE09. So anyone who's mentioning this conference comes up immediately on my screen in TweetDeck. Um, if some of you saw the Amazon widgets presentation today, Amazon's allowed us to interact as affiliates with um, their, their programs. And you can come up with you know, uh, wish list widgets and deals widgets and my favorite widgets, little applications that you can build that people can download and they can sit them on their desktop and you go direct to their desktop. Here's a widget that Woot.com's made available. So you can put the Woot.com widget right on your desktop and you'll get the Woot deal of the day right there on your desktop. But think of it from a business perspective. What an amazing opportunity that you get a consumer to actually download your ad that changes based on the, the widget technology, uploads the latest deal right there on your desktop. Here's a company called Widgetbox, and you can actually build these little widgets. We've been building a blog widget for our clients. So their latest blog information uploads, and customers can download the, these on their desktop and they get a little blog widget. We call it a blidget, blog widget. So super widgetization, the, se the seventh strategy, developing applications 
that go direct to people's iPhones, direct to their Facebook. Some business applications include um, iPhone apps, uh, Amazon apps, widget box, and Facebook applications. And the advanced applications, how can you create an application or widget that's going to get your affiliate deals direct to their desktop, that are going to deliver your deals direct to my Facebook or my iPhone? Uh, a Twitter tweet might be, open architecture and applications drove Facebook past MySpace. Twitter and iPhone apps are also very hot. This great study recently came out by Michael Stelzner. It's called the Social Media Marketing Report. And this one chart really stood out for me. They asked marketers, so they asked 880 of us, what social media tools are you using right now? The top one was Twitter. 86% are using Twitter. 79 are using blogs. 78 are using LinkedIn. 77 are using Facebook. But I thought it was amazing. Only 41% are using YouTube. How many of us are developing video in the room? Show of hands, please. So uh, right about on that number, only about 40%. But the amazing opportunity is YouTube is the number three site on Alexa. It's now the number three website in terms of unique visitors and page views on Alexa. It's the number three website in the world. It's the number two search engine in the world, just behind Google. So amazing opportunity to develop video because it's the number three website in the world. People are searching for stuff on video, and only 40% of your competition is trying to figure it out. It's an amazing opportunity. We're shooting video here today, and we'll edit it up, and we'll put it up in a couple uh, YouTube videos. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, Chris talked about him this morning. Amazing story. I, I interviewed him for my podcast at the last Affiliate Summit. And he said in 2006, he was shooting a video every day, and he was doing wine sampling. And he was spending about 15 or 20 minutes shooting the video, and then he spent the rest of the day interacting with people on blogs, interacting with people on Twitter, interacting with people on instant messaging and building his name in the community, and building up his social network. Today, he gets 80,000 downloads a day of his different videos because he stuck with it, and he became the wine video guy. He became the wine expert for the common man. Uh, this is a great video, um, and Blendtec is one of the great business examples of product demonstration videos. And um, this uh, gentleman is the CEO of Blendtec, and he blends everything from cricket mallets to brooms to golf balls. And the most famous video, he blended a working iPhone into a dust. Seven million people viewed the video. It's a great, it's a great one to see. Um, this video uh, really launched Barack Obama to fame. The I've got a crush on Obama video took this relatively unknown candidate, um, really put him on the short list for the Democratic nomination. 12 million views. Uh, How-to videos, many of you have probably seen the Common Craft videos, but they're so easy to do. I mean, these are just stick figure drawings. And people, the number two search engine in the world now is YouTube. People are searching for how to do things in your industry. So there's no reason you can't develop like a little stick figure drawing and put it up on YouTube explaining to people how to do things in your category or your industry. Uh, when you do those videos, you want to name them really well. You want to include the keyword phrases that people would search for to look for your products and information. And look at the power of blended search. See how your eye goes to this image. It's very, very powerful um, from the blended search perspective. This is a video for our client, Annie's Costumes. TubeMogul is a great tool. You can distribute your video to a number of different websites. So you, it goes to YouTube, but it also goes to about 15 other uh, video websites. And you get great statistics when you use TubeMogul to distribute your videos. So the eighth strategy is video. Great opportunity. Only 40% of marketers are doing it. Great opportunity for you to take advantage of the number three website in the world. Videos build viral traffic to your website. So when you get that viral buzz, it's going to build links and traffic over to your website. They're also great for conversion. So if you do a how-to video in your category, it's a great way to convert people to try your products and services. Uh, name and tag your videos with keywords and use tools like uh, TubeMogul and building communities and Web 2.0 celebrities, parody and comedy. We saw the, the power of the uh, Barack Obama videos. So my tweet would be, amazing opportunity. 41% of marketers are doing YouTube. Um, only 41% of marketers are doing YouTube, and it's the number three Alexa site and the number two search engine. In this section, I want to uh, name these personal, uh, personal brand rock stars and affiliate rock stars to win. So if you weren't here at the start, everybody has one of these handouts with a bunch of the uh, affiliate rock stars. 
So uh, I gave away Barack Obama and Jim Kukrul in the top left and right. Where's Mr. Brogan on here? He didn't make it. He, he's not on this version. <laughs> he's definitely a rock star in my eyes. So if you fill in this form and hand it to Michael, we're going to give away a prize if anyone can name all these uh, affiliate marketing rock stars. So um, Tom Peters wrote an article in Fast Company magazine on August of 97, and he said, start right now. As of this moment, you're going to think of yourself differently. You're not an employee of General Motors, and sadly, who is anymore? Starting today, you are a brand. So here's 10 tips to be uh, a personal brand, to be a personal brand rock star. Number one, develop your brand marketing plan. What's in, uh, different and individual about you? How are you going to promote your brand? How are you going to take it to the next level? How are you going to market yourself personally uh, and set some specific measurable goals? You know, I'm going to write five blog posts a week. I'm going to um, go to Toastmasters and learn how to do speaking. Uh, set very specific goals. Determine your unique selling proposition, your USP. What makes you distinctive? How can you enhance your unique skills? Um, I wrote the 10 Golden Rules of Internet Marketing, and that's really shaped my life and made my, my own life and career go in really exciting personal directions. Follow your passion. We all know that Sean Collins, the co-founder of Affiliate Summit, is really passionate about internet marketing, and he's very consistent with his brand, Affiliate Tip. And everywhere you see him in social media, he's talking about affiliate marketing and doing videos about affiliate marketing and Twittering about affiliate marketing. So where do you like to hang out? What do you love to read? Pick your personal area of passion, and that's a great area to build out your personal brand. Mr. Brogan shared this tip on his blog. He said, listening is my first move in starting to understand social media. Go and read blogs. Go visit search.twitter.com. See what people are saying. The first step is to get a, an understanding for how people are using a social media before you start talking. Listen first. Embrace your inner author. Nothing's going to help you more in internet marketing today like writing great, unique content. Write a blog, write a book, create a video, submit articles to industry publications, create your own website using uh, wordpress.com, and build great content in your uh, LinkedIn and Facebook personal profiles. Build out your network. I have something like 700 connections in LinkedIn, but the amazing thing about that is they have over 7 million connections. So virtually everyone in the internet marketing and the marketing industry is connected to one of my connections. They're one click away. All they need to do is request one connections to connect me with those folks. Volunteer to shine. Missy Ward does an amazing job volunteering. Those, uh, many of us probably bought a donation to the breast cancer charity that she's supporting, and they gave um, a, a big check for $20,000 today to big brothers and big sisters. Personally, I've used volunteering as a great way to get connections and networking and experience, as well as doing some good uh, for my community. So it's a great way to get some experience. Volunteer for a charity. Volunteer for your local marketing association or interactive marketing association. Maybe they need someone to you know, do some blogging for them, and it would be a great way for you to get some career experience and add to your resume in a very practical environment. Innovate to lead. Test new technologies. Be on the leading edge of stuff. It's a great way to be perceived as a leading brand. An entrepreneur. I mean, most of you are doing it. You're doing affiliate marketing. You're, you're putting... Um, AdSense links and affiliate links and, and logos on, on your uh, blog. And entrepreneuring, I wish I understood that entrepreneuring was a verb, and the more you do it, the better you get at it, the more it's going to move your career forward. And finally, public speaking. It's been a huge differentiator for my career, and I went to Toastmasters early in my career, and I learned how to speak, and I learned how to develop presentations. And the advanced version of presentations that I recommend is a blog and a book called Presentation Zen, Z-E-N, Presentation Zen by Gar Reynolds, who talks about these presentations with lots of images and telling stories. Um, great opportunity to register your personal brand. Two new websites. One is Google Profiles, allows you to sort of lock in your personal brand in a new site called peoplepond.com. So strategy number nine, build your personal brand. Carve out a unique niche for yourself, your personal brand, Think of yourself as a brand manager. Follow your passion. Do something in the area that you're passionate about. And then innovate a little bit. Entrepreneur, volunteer, uh, maybe join Toastmasters. Some of the advanced tactics are writing ebooks, white papers, and taking advantage of public speaking opportunities. A tweet I sent out earlier today was rock out your personal brand. 
Number one, follow your passion. Number two, focus on one social media. So if you're just starting out, don't try and do everything. You know, pick one thing and become really, really great at it. Do videos and become really, really well known like Gary Vaynerchuk became in video. Or tweet all the time and, and add value with your tweets. So, so pick one and become great at it. You know, have your profile and everything. And number three, become known for something. You know, put, put a brand on yourself like 10 Golden Rules Guy or um, Tim Ash was, was in this room before. He's sort of the landing page guy. You know, it's great if you sort of become known for something that you like to do. I'm going to wrap up with um, what's being called the semantic web or web 3.0. The semantic web basically is the internet trying to um, build a higher level of intelligence. It's, semantics is basically the root meaning of words. And it's the internet trying to um, basically develop artificial intelligence. Tim Berners-Lee, who invented the internet way before Al Gore did, said, I have a dream for the web in which all computers become capable of analyzing all data on the web. Essentially, the internet becomes intelligent agents. One of the first examples of that we're seeing is when we type a, a typo and Google says, did you mean this? And so Google's not only typos, but sometimes when we type the wrong word phrase, Google's now saying, hey, more people search for this. Did you really mean to search for this? So it's like the web trying to understand the semantics or the meaning of what we're looking for. There's a lot of data that has got to be analyzed and relation, uh, relationalized, if you will. Uh, Bing's trying to do a little bit of the first um, version of this that we're seeing on a search engine. And uh, a client of ours, uh, full disclosure, called Bintro, is trying to connect people using semantics or Web 3.0. So I was looking for a copywriter recently, and they connected me to someone who had copy editor in their profile because they understood the root meaning of those words, and they were able to connect me with someone uh, for a business opportunity. So Bintro is like a business networking engine. So I'll wrap up with a, a summary of Web, two to, Web 2010, the 10 strategies defining our business future. Number one is micro-communications, short attention span, short headlines, and short communications. Number two is virtualization. What opportunities are there where you could virtualize your business and provide virtual training or virtual courses or use virtual resources? We saw some amazing free products that I'm using all the time, like SpyFu to find out what my competitors are doing in pay-per-click or compete.com. Uh, customer service is the new marketing department, using tools like search.twitter.com and Radian6 to monitor what's being said about your brand. Disintermediation, we're seeing the second wave of this disintermediation and the opportunities that you could create for your business by taking the middleman out of your business. Creating amazing widgets, super widgetization for things like the iPhone, um, Facebook applications, and Twitter, of course. The amazing opportunity of Twitter, only 41% of your competitors uh, sorry, of, of YouTube, only 41% of your competitors are trying to figure out video. So what a great opportunity to really take your business to the next level. People are searching for those how-to videos, trying to figure out your industry. Building out your personal brand, and, and finally, understanding the semantic web or web 3.0. I do all this speaking and stuff, and people still say, well, what exactly is 10 golden rules? Um, so what we do is we do affiliate program management. Um, this is a great one if you're looking for uh, a program at this time of year because Annie's Costumes is big into the costume business, so it's a great time to get your uh, costume banners up uh, prior to Halloween. Um, we do landing pages, so landing pages are different from a home page where you convert people um, in, in through a landing page funnel. We're doing a lot of video, of course. Uh, viral marketing spreads through word of mouth. A lot of search engine marketing. So we help our clients get listed on the left side and the right hand side of search, e-newsletters, program launches, blogs, and social media stuff. This is a Facebook page for Kaplan Continuing Education. So I just want to wrap up with one little sound bite, which is, you know, I gave you about 30 or 40 different things to do. You're going to come home with about 200 pages worth of notes. But my recommendation is to prioritize things. And I, I didn't come across 10 golden rules by fluke. I had always believed in 10 lists in my career. So like when I went to work at this dot-com company, I got the CEO to agree, here's our top 10 priorities for the company. We're going to get the first one done first, the second one done second. So prioritize things that you're going to take home from this conference. What's the single most important thing I need to have done by the weekend? What's the single most important thing I need to do next week? And try one thing at a time. Don't, don't take all these great notes home from the conference 
and say, I'm going to do all this stuff and have a lot of enthusiasm and, and don't get any of it done. Um, if you would, please pay it forward, so join the conversation. We have a recording line on our podcast. You can call in with questions, 206-888-6606. Please be my friend on LinkedIn and Twitter, and my uh, Twitter name is at Jay Berkowitz. I appreciate any speaking opportunities, so if you're a member of any associations, I do this kind of stuff um, all over the world now, and um, be happy to talk to you about how we can help with your search marketing or affiliate marketing uh, conversion strategies. The, if you didn't get a copy of the presentation, there, there should be enough in the room, but if not, they're at presentations.10goldenrules.com. And if you would, do me a favor. Um, if, write FU on the back of your business card if you'd like me to follow up with you. That's, that's FU means follow up. Um, because sometimes I get a lot of business cards and I just want to differentiate if, if you'd like to talk after the conference. Um, and it, with that, I'll take some questions if we have time. How are we on time, Michael? Got some time for questions. I'm, I'm gonna, if, if you don't want to be on audio, just let me know, but this will go on my podcast. So. I was just wondering if you... Oh, wait, and feel free to plug your name and your company and your Twitter. And... I'm JB with Lifetime Customer. Um... I'm just wondering if starting out on Twitter to get followers, is there like a, a, a good way to get your name out there for people to start following you? I actually have uh, 10 tips for Twitter on my website if you click on the newsletter. But um, some of the basics for getting followers on Twitter, um, the first thing is you've got to have a really good profile, like say who you are and a really good headshot. Um, and the second thing is, uh, you know, write some really good tweets and follow the three E's, so educate, engage, and um, entertain. <laughs> Thank you. So if you make it really uh, interesting, your Twitter stream, so that when you follow other people, they get an email and they click on it and they go look at your Twitter stream. So if you have a really interesting Twitter stream, there's more likelihood that they're going to follow you. And then check out sites like wefollow.com, and there's a number of automated tools like Twitter Grader. We'll show you all the top people in your area um, or all the top people in a city. And so follow a bunch of people who, on um, uh, we follow people who have the same interests, and on Twitter, greater people who are in the same area, and those people who have similar interests to you are more likely to follow you. So those are some good strategies for building up your Twitter following. I'm going to actually turn this over to Mr. Brogan. Mr. Brogan, how do you get 70, 80,000 people to follow you on Twitter? 90,000. You delete 20,000. <laughs> 20, uh, we, we've got to like, hang out together. I'm just going to talk to your cheek. Yeah. Well, Jay. <laughs> no pictures, can please. Can I hug you? All right. Yeah, you can I'm hug, gonna hug you. All right. Jay? Uh, the answer is be helpful. Uh, share. Find all the good stuff. I mean, you pointed out Iconic88, who is a great, great resource. Mayhem Studios is another great Calvin Lee. Mayhem um, Studios. Yeah, Mayhem yeah. Studios. Share, 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 and talk about other people. The one magic trick that we can always do is the more we talk about other people, the more they want to pay attention to us. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Jay. Very Thanks well done. <laughs> Questions, comments? Over here. Excuse me. This is the interactive portion. <laughs> uh, you talked about the growing strength of YouTube, and obviously you can do reviews and stuff for boosting conversion off your videos, but aside from reviews, do you have any tips for boosting conversion off the videos? Boosting conversion off videos. Well, I mean, YouTube's like any other internet marketing. So a lot of testing will go a long way. Um, so those how-to videos are very powerful, where you do a product demonstration. Or just, um, you know, as Chris just said, help people. So create videos that just explain how to do things in your industry, explain how to, um, you know, save money, make money, anything like that, um, how to cut corners, how to get your product cheap. You know, if you're an affiliate, explain how to get the best deals on products. Um, so just make the videos very, very helpful, very practical. Um, and then just do a lot of testing. And then ha also have a regular strategy. So if you say, I'm going to do a video, three videos a week. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we're getting a video out come hell or high water. And then like Gary Vaynerchuk t talked about, every day he spent 15 or 20 minutes making his video. And then he spent the rest of the day, seven or eight hours, going to all the wine forums and all the blogs and commenting on people's blogs and you know, interacting with people on Twitter. And you see the guy's totally interactive in everything he does, helping people. And you know, eventually, if they see you helping them out enough, they're going to come and check out 
your videos and come and check out your blog and your website. Um, and it's going to pay off in the long run. One up front. Hi, my name is Carolina from bloggersschool.com. I want to know what, what do you think about the Twitter snobs, people who have a lot of followers but they don't follow anybody back, like CNN. They have over one million people following them, but they have just six people they follow and they are their own accounts. So I, I want to know if you think they're missing something, they, you lose as a, a business person. What's your opinion? Uh, the question was about Twitter snobs. <laughs> um, and you know, one of the things to know about Twitter snobs is that a lot of the people who are following you maybe aren't necessarily following you as much as you think. Because it's very easy to click on the follow button, or a lot of people have automated follow, and they follow you back. Um, and it looks really good, but then they're using a tool, like you guys saw my tweet deck. And so I've got a column where I've sorted people. Like I've got, got all my geeks, I call them, my internet marketing people in the first column. Um, I've got a bunch of people categorized a bunch of client research in a column. Uh, I've got a column for everyone who mentions my name. So really, I think what's much more important is not exactly how many people follow you back, but how many people interact with you. And it's really, really important to start developing those en engaging relationships. So you know, nine times out of 10, if you ask Chris Brogan a smart question, he's probably going to respond to you. Um, or if you, know, if you say, hey, Chris, great job this morning, or you know, read his book and, and ch one chap, you know, each chapter summarize something you learn from the, from the book, and Chris and Julian are probably going to start tweeting you back, and, and everyone who follows them is, is going to see you. I'll tell you another Chris Brogan story because he's here. Um, Chris and I were at um, PubCon in Austin, Texas, and I organized a dinner the night before the conference. And we had dinner with a bunch of great people, Eric O'Grady and uh, Ann Taylor, a bunch of people in Austin. And after dinner, Chris took a minute to tweet out. He said, I had dinner with Jay Berkowitz, and all his people, he's a great guy, and I hung out with Eric O'Grady. Um, the, the by the next day, I had 300 new followers. So the engagement, you know, because Chris at that time had 50,000 followers. So the engagement of, you know, getting engaged with some of these powerful Twitterers is really what matters. It's that relationship at that next level. Um, got time for a few more? Michael, why don't you... Hi, I'm Pat DeCourcy from HairSupplyShop.com. You were talking about with the YouTube videos, which we're starting to produce for our website. Is it a good idea or a bad idea to use videos that are already out there? Even though they're not ours, I know they're probably going to be directing them to their site somewhere yeah. in the video. But in the meantime, until, because we got 700 something products. That's awesome, 700 products. I mean, the only reason not to use other people's videos is if you don't own the rights to do that. But if um, you know, some, one of your suppliers has created a video about one of the products and you have the rights or you get the rights to use that, um, if you edit it down a little bit and then give it a new name in YouTube, for the most part, it's going to be seen as a new entity. Um, you should create a, a channel, create your own channel on YouTube. And you have an opportunity to name that channel with keyword phrases that people will be searching for. Um, and, and the channel really gives you like your own TV channel on YouTube. What I'm, what I'm thinking though is like if I, we just embed their video on our site from YouTube. So we would be leaving yeah. their information up there. So, so if you just embed their video, I mean, I think it would be worth the effort. Like we, we actually had an intern this summer who was doing some video editing for us. Um, so, you know, there's kids in like your local college who are in video school, it's very, very inexpensive to start creating some new content and editing up some of that content. I think it'd be worth the effort to, to make it better. Yeah. Thank you. Got a few more? Anyone? Sorry for the interactive portion of this. Yeah, Eric Hom from Ticketmaster. Um, what's your thoughts on personal branding for a corporation? So, for example, Mr. Shea from Zappos and Frank from Comcast Cares versus just being JetBlue or being uh, Amazon? Well, I think it's, that's a great question. I mean, um, Tony Shea has done an amazing job building his personal brand on Twitter, over a million followers, and really opening the kimono, sharing everything that's happening at, at um, 
uh, Zappos, the uh, billion dollar shoe company, it was just sold to Amazon. Um, so Tony's done a great job building that personal brand and sharing everything that's going on, inviting people to come to Vegas and tour the plant. Um, and because he's the CEO and he put his name on it, like he's Zappos.com, I think that, that makes a lot of sense and it works for him. Um, a big company like JetBlue, I met John Dowdy, and he was um, you know, a relative you know, mid-level marketing guy. And so he obviously brought a lot more value to the company by, blog, by Twittering as at JetBlue than at John Dowdy. Um, and, and he to told me an amazing story. They, they were under 100,000 followers in January of this year, and they're now upwards seven, eight 800,000. So that just shows you the growth of Twitter from January of this year to uh, July, August, uh, you know, multiples of hundreds of thousands. So, um, you know, I think it makes more sense for a relatively junior person in the organization to build the brand. And the one tip I have for every company is uh, get your Twitter name. <laughs> and for every individual, every person, you know, it might even be too late if you have a common name to get your Twitter name. But lock it down. You know, get, make sure you have your company name. Make sure you have a couple variations of the way people refer to your company. And if you can, get that in Twitter. Even if you're not going to start tweeting, may, you know, this, this Twitter thing might be big one day. So it might make sense to lock that down for yourself. Hi. Mike Napoli with EasyBusinessReview.com. Um, podcasting become, seems to be becoming pretty popular, as you're doing now. Uh, for a lot of these rock stars, I think it's more popular than the common person that's up and coming. Uh, will we be seeing more and more of this uh, available yeah. to us? You know, my personal view on podcasts is it's almost like I mentioned earlier with YouTube, where only 41% of people are doing videos, 41% of marketers are doing YouTube videos. Um, podcasting is the same kind of thing. There's really only about 20 people who do a regular marketing podcast. So when I put this podcast out, and hello to everyone who's listening virtually sometime in the future, when I put this audio podcast out, I only have 20 or 30 competitors. How many competitors do you think we all have for blogging? Right? M probably a million competitors. So podcasting is a unique opportunity. The other thing is about 30% of people with broadband have downloaded podcasts. But obviously with the explosion of iPhones, more and more people are going to figure it out. And I think podcasting is one of those things that's such an intimate medium that when you listen to a podcast, and if you don't get the guy right away or, or, who, or, or the, the woman who's doing the podcast, you're going to say, well, I don't understand this podcasting thing. I don't get it. But when you find one that's in your area of passion or in your area of business interest, and you can listen to the guy for, for half an hour, 45 minutes, then you probably have the experience I had, which is, I need more podcasts. This is amazing. I want more and more of it. And so I had this explosion of you know, searching everywhere for every podcast on internet marketing and affiliate marketing and search marketing and finding some really, really great ones out there and then creating my own podcast. And um, if you're interested in podcasting, uh, I recorded a session that I did at PodCamp Boston called 10 Tips for Launching and Promoting a New Podcast. And it's on the 10 Golden Rules podcast, it's number 13. So I recorded the podcast and also the slides are available for download. So it walks you through the, the tools you need and how to promote your podcast and build it up. Oh, it's the 10 gold, so if you just go to 10goldenrules.com and click on podcast, there's a link for podcast at 10goldenrules.com. And number 13, episode 13, I walk through 10 tips on how to create your own podcast. Let me take one more and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap up. Hi, I'm Heather Mitchell from TRS Field Force, and you mentioned early on in your presentation that you had done a, um, that you had spoken for a direct sales company, and one of the questions that I have, I'm kind of transitioning from affiliate marketing into direct sales, and I'm really kind of looking for creative ways to work within the bounds of direct sales, because a lot of the companies have their own branding, and it's really important for them to protect that. And yet, I have this background in, you know, in, in online marketing, and so I'm wondering if you have any suggestions for how to utilize the tools of online marketing while still staying within the bounds of you know, what a typical direct sales company expects from their independent consultants. I think one of the biggest opportunities, you know, like if you're a real estate agent or um, you work for a company and you have to you know, represent the brand of the company, is you know, creating a blog or a podcast or your own personal brand in Twitter allows you to create that brand that's going to have a legacy for you. And you, you know, everything you're doing today, you can be blogging about the company, 
You can be doing videos about how to use the company's products, how to save money on the company's products. But you're building your personal brand because you're, you're helping people. You're doing how-to videos. You're doing product demos. And you're building your subscribers on Twitter, your followers on Twitter, your subscribers to your blog. And if you were to change careers, you would have built up all that equity with people that you, know, you provide just good, honest advice. It's authentic, you know, and you're, you're a legitimate expert in your field. And you can carry that expertise with you while still doing something good for your company today and building something for your future tomorrow. Anyways, thank you all very much, and I'll stick around uh, for questions. <laughs>